Cappadocia literally took my breath away, mainly because there was a snowstorm as I visited this beautiful location. But come with me, the Mushmunk, as I travel through these underground cities, these houses, churches carved out of volcanic rock by the people of around 300 after death to avoid the persecution of the eye of the Roman Empire. I also talk about the Fathers of Cappadocia here and St. Gregory, one of the St. Gregories, who was a mystic and definitely was a man who pushed beyond the boundaries of modern-day Christianity. He had a strange uh, connection with the Eucharist and talked a lot about the Eucharist. And my beliefs, due to the famous book, The Immortality Key, that was a New York Times bestseller, that the Eucharist was possibly, and more than likely, a psychedelic wine that gave people access to the afterworld, to talk to, and possibly to communicate with, well, maybe God. So join me as I track through a snowstorm and get lost in the spectacular caves and sites of Cappadocia. I wander off into random caves and just look. You could go anywhere here in Cappadocia. It's a huge region. And you don't pay a fee. Some places you do, but you just wander in a cave and you can see the carved rock of crosses of people who worship there. 300, 400 AD. It's absolutely stunning and amazing. I feel very honored to have the chance to go to Cappadocia, especially in a snowstorm because it wasn't crowded with Instagram models and their boyfriend photographers. So enjoy this episode. But first, I would also like to thank you, my viewers. This channel is for fun, as you can tell by my low subscriber count. Uh, I just do it for fun. Um, I hope you enjoy my travels and insight into history. Uh, if you want to learn more and support my cause, check out my Patreon and Instagram which is below in the description. Thanks again for all the support and bearing with me as I stumble through history and as a fan of a, and a lifelong student of history. And to start this uh, episode off, I figured I would use a quote of the magnificent Timothy Leary. Turn on, tune in, and drop out. Welcome to Cappadocia, the land of beautiful horses and wannabe Instagram models and their boyfriends wannabe photographers. Oh shit. And also, apparently, the place of snowstorms. Instagram, you lied to me. You lied to me. But I'm on my way to get some pizza. We're here in Cappadocia. The weather will clear up, don't worry. And we're gonna go explore this region. All right, this pizza better be worth it. I am soaked. Nike's. Nike's about had it. All right. down there for pizza but it's packed with maybe a foot of snow maybe and one side's a cliff somewhere around here there's a trail and then rocks I think Google Maps always knows the shortcuts all right Wait a second. That's my car. That's where I'm staying. I went in a big circle. <laughs> where the hell? And I still don't know where the restaurant is. Oh, all right, it's cool. Well, here we are near Cappadocia. It looks like it snowed last night. My car got some snow on it and I definitely am rocking some Nikes so we'll see how it does in the snow already soaked but uh, there's my car so uh, anyways we're gonna head out explore Cappadocia see where the Christians hid during the Roman Empire and uh, yeah check out some local places and talk a little bit about maybe some psychedelics in the Eucharist but uh, anyways I gotta deal with this first I mean, these cave systems are absolutely magnificent. I mean, 
Oh, I finally got a selfie stick, but check it out. Just the valleys, it snowed last night. It's just beautiful. Um, and behind me, see if I could get this for you. Whoop. Behind me, up there, there we go, up there. That is, I believe, the St. John's uh, Church, which you can't get to because it's all the pathway is so crazy and the rocks are all, um, I guess they fall when you go up there. There's signs saying don't go up there. I kind of went around the side, but this is about as far as I could go. But um, yeah, just super cool. You've seen the drone footage better, but um, just super cool cave systems. I mean, they're just everywhere, just tons and tons. And not in just this region, we're in Gorem, uh, G-O-R-E-M-E. Just awesome cave systems. I mean, just absolutely fantastic. It's just a magical place. And, uh, you know, Christianity it has a lot of spirituality, which we're going to talk about next. Now, around 200 after death, Christians started to arrive here, uh, mainly to avoid persecution. This is a great hiding spot. You have these deep valleys. You have these, you know, these inner cities that could be... This lava and ash uh, was easily carved out for homes and underground cities and monasteries and churches uh, are all over this area with the magnificent paintings at one time. Some are still preserved, but like here, not much. You'll find engravings of crosses, but just absolutely amazing. A lot of these places are hard to get because the weather has just took away the path or the staircases, rocks have crumbled over time. But uh, just interesting, the Christians were here hiding, and it was a, a time um, when the Christians were here of great education among, among the Christians. A lot of spirituality, a lot of education, just a lot of theology was going on here, and mysticism, which is always an interest of mine. Just absolutely amazing. Come, come check it out. I mean, just super cool. I can show you, there's possibly a tomb. Check this out. Is the at the door, and then, whoop, and then you can see down here this cross engraved, um, <clears throat> surrounded by a square. I don't know if that's just a boundary, but you also see that there almost is kind of a, a line down here. And these crosses are a bit different. One of the monasteries I just looked at. It's, it's a normal cross you see a lot, but there might be an extra little horizontal on top of the longer horizontal. Um, also some crosses here. And as you can see, they kind of go down like a V, down, uh, upside down V, and then horizontally, almost like a tree or a branch. Um, obviously, I, I don't know. Uh, someone else is probably way more educated at the symbolism than I am, but um, here's another one. Maybe crosses do sometimes represent the tree, the tree of life, um, I'm sure. But uh, just cool. And there's all these just little dugouts, um, like where they probably put candles and maybe icons, because uh, icon worship, we'll talk about a little later, was pretty big here. But um, just super cool. You can even see some paint still, still there. You know, the weather's probably took away most of the, the paint. But um, this is one of a million, I don't know, thousands. But uh, just so many, I mean, just surrounding this area. Interesting, uh, I'm just sitting here inside this old church, far away from other people. I don't know if this is on the tourist map, but the crucifixion, there seems to be a, uh, you know, a, a moon or something. I don't know. Uh, I probably should do a little more research before I just guess, but um, pretty interesting there. Man, it's just amazing. Wow, I'm just, I'm just chilling here, probably where a bishop used to sit, but uh, man, just so cool. These frescoes are just everywhere. They're all been scratched up, which is such a shame. Someone seems like came in here and just scratched them all up. Horrible. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Now around 
around 300 and 400 AD, we talked about the Christians coming into Cappadocia. Um, and it's mentioned in the Bible in Acts, and I believe one other verse talks mostly about the gospel being spread here. And this was a time of enlightenment for Christians. There was This time was called the Fathers of Cappadocia. So you had three, three saints, basically three fathers that really taught and were respected here. And it was uh, St. Basil and two St. Gregories. And the second St. Gregory I kind of want to focus on because he was kind of a mystic. Interesting guy. One that stood out to me anyways. But uh, uh, he mentioned a lot about the Eucharist. And um, if anyone knows me, I've been talking about this book, The Immortality Key by Brian Murasaki. Murasaki. I'm going to mess that name up. Sorry, Brian. But um, get an easier name, you know? No. <laughs> Brian M. But uh, look it up, The Immortality Key. And it talks about, you know, it talks about a lot of things, but mainly it talks about communion, the Eucharist, um, kind of being taken from the Greeks. And then we know it as communion, the Eucharist, the wine you drink, uh, the flesh, the blood of God, the bread you eat. Anyway, St. Gregory, the second St. Gregory, he was really big on the mysticism, you know, took a lot from the pagans, the Greek pagans, the Jewish community, especially their mystic stuff, very spiritual guy. And he was really focused on the Eucharist a lot, kind of going based off the mortality key and kind of my personal uh, take on it. The reason I like that book so much is because I do believe psychedelics and stuff were in religion. I mean, there's, there's, when I first took psychedelics, I was like, oh, okay, I, I'm a believer. <laughs> I get how you could believe uh, in God now uh, instantly. Not that you need to take psychedelics, but if you want to take an atheist and make them a believer, give them a psychedelic experience. And within a few hours a day, they're, they're probably going to believe. I think there's a study on that where a lot of atheists actually believe after taking mushrooms or uh, DMT or other type of psychedelics. Um, I know my DMT and mushroom experience were very transformable and kind of brought me back to religion in a way. And I, and I just kind of want to read some quotes from St. Gregory that I want you to kind of think about the psychedelics religion, kind of Eucharist, and if these people were drinking wine that was actually spiked with psychedelics. Um, St. Gregory goes on to say, without shame and without doubt, eat the flesh and drink the blood of Christ if you are desirous of true life. Another thing he says about it is, just as the bread which comes from the earth, Having received the invocation of God is no longer ordinary bread, the Eucharist, consisting of two realities, earthly and heavenly. So our bodies, having received the Eucharist, are no longer corruptible because they have the hope of the resurrection. There, is it psychedelics? I believe so. You don't have to. Uh, you can still be a fan of St. Gregory. <laughs> but um, I just think that it's so interesting that he talks about the the bread, you know, bread molds and, and fungi, which could, could give you these altered states. Um, and DMT is located everywhere. Mushrooms are all around the Alaton, um, this area. And even there's uh, archaeological evidence of pre-existing communities and, and artwork and sculptures that show mushrooms. So it was definitely influenced here. And the Christians always took from the past. Um, all cultures take from the past and kind of adapt into their own way. Interesting that he says the two worlds. If you take a psychedelic, you're going to know there's two worlds, and you're going to see this world completely different. Um, anyways, I uh, just saw this interesting St. Gregory being someone who looked to the cosmos. Um, you hear that a lot in Hinduism, um, and just they all kind of say the same thing, look inward. And I know when I did DMT, I went inward, and I was – save that for another video, but uh, yeah – you definitely see beings that could be gods and angels. And um, <clears throat> I know to the person that hasn't taken a psychedelic, this might seem like BS, but can't knock it till you try it, my friend, because I used to say the same thing. But uh, anyways, here in this, the Black the black Castle Church, and um, just thought I'd shoot this little video and talk about St. Gregory a bit. Hey guys, I can't stress enough how cool this place is. Um, I'm in Gorham, next to Cappadocia again. Um, I'm just walking around. I'm in this like monastery. See the cross on the ceiling. See behind me. Um, <clears throat> looks like there was an engraving here at one point. Kind of hard to see, but uh, I mean, I didn't pay for this. I'm just walking around and there's just location after location of places to check out. Just these churches and um <clears throat> there's places you could pay but i came too late i was closed around four o'clock i closed i think it's about 4 30. but um you can just walk up in any of these and just check them out um it's just so freaking cool and there's just I, i'm like a kid again i love exploring brings the inner child out in me especially something so historic um <clears throat> 
I even think they probably, uh, this is, looks like where they probably filmed Tenacious D's Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy. I won't do that again, I promise. Tell me what do you do? Something, some words. But uh, yeah, this is just a cool ass place. If you're around this area, just come by and man, you can bring camping gear. Uh, probably not in the winter. It's freezing right now. I think it's gonna snow. There's a storm coming in, but um, I'm just absolutely speechless about just walking around and checking out these old paintings from, you know, uh, around the time Jesus died, 200 years after, maybe even before Jesus. Um, I think it's all kind of mixed in. Um, but uh, yeah, just super amazing, super interesting. Um, I just feel very happy and excited to just wander around. Thanks for watching this episode of The Mushmunk. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video or not. Um, <laughs> but don't forget to check out next week as I continue exploring Cappadocia, especially focusing on the beautiful Lahara Valley region. More cave systems, more churches to explore. Um, I think you'll enjoy this episode as I absolutely love this region of Turkey. Um, again, thank you so much for watching. This is the Mushmunk. See you next week. time going through some of these uh, spots but uh, super cool I wish I had a shovel I would just go crazy here uh, okay <sighs> okay <laughs> that boy Winnie the Pooh Winnie the Pooh's coming out okay okay <laughs> Winnie the Pooh